Hi, I'm Paul at One Man One Dog. So it's Saturday the 30th of May 2020 and this video is my first e-mountain bike conversion and it's a 1000 watt giant e-revel mountain bike. So I've been working on it. So here it is. So this video is the work that I've done on it and I'll catch up in a minute on my test ride, okay? Hi, it's Bank Holiday Monday, the 25th of May 2020, it's dinner time 12pm and this is my e-mount in bike conversion, it's a 1000 watt giant e-revel this video is part four. In part one, I get the eBay parts and unbox them with my niece. In part two, I've been given a free GT iDrive frame, but the back wheel was too big for it, so I didn't use that. And in part three, I've built the giant e Revel, and I take it for a test ride, but I take it for a test ride with no chain, no drillier, and no cassette, and no PAS and the test ride on part three is all throttle and i get 23 mile an hour right so i just want to talk through the bike a bit so first of all here we have a thousand watt voiler mart e-bike wheel and you buy it as a conversion kit it's 179 pounds 180 pounds i think and that's gbp great british pounds so you get the motor you get the controller and all the wires. You get the on off switch and you turn the PAS up and down with that. And you get the display. Right. Secondly is a Halong battery. 48 volt, 13 amp hour. The bike itself is a giant Revel. Suntour SR forks. I've fitted hydraulic brakes on it, front and back. So let's get round the other side. It come with a cassette, but I've not fitted it. Didn't have the tools to fit it. It's not got the chain. It's not got the front clanger. Right, okay. So I'll show you that it turned on. So you press and hold the power button. And it turns on, the battery is already switched on by the way, with that switch there. So, you've got the display there, it's an SW900. I'm not going to talk through the display, but you've got a throttle here. And I'll just show it going. It's got some torque, but with a throttle alone, you need the PAS really, so you can pedal and get up the hills. A few people commented on my last video, and they said, yeah, they fitted the PAS. And I've had a few people comment asking questions about the Voilermark kit, but I've only given it a test ride, like I said, on throttle. And today, I'm going to get my X-Tools. Let's just get it out here. So this X-Tools bicycle toolkit my brother got it me for my birthday it's awesome and we've got a tool somewhere where is it it's here right and you put that in the crank arm and i'm going to pull the crank arm off and i'm going to fit the pas sensor so that's the first job i'm going to do and secondly is fit the front shifter and we used to call them double clangers Right, let me just turn the display off and you press and hold it. it says off there and turn it off with the battery to prolong life look at this puppy princess she's so well behaved when i go out of the room she just chills out don't you hey little darling i think she stopped biting the camera now oh she's too tired She's been a walk today. Walk her twice a day, the little puppy, aren't you? Are you going to sit? Are you going to sit? 
What a good girl. What a good girl. Oh, where's she gone? Okay, so it's now our five. And I've got sidetracked shampoo and the carpets. And I've used this, the crank arm puller. Got my crank arm off. Use that wrench. Use an Allen key socket and did the technique that cycling with Russ told me to do. So he said, tighten it all up, get it, and you need leverage and put a load of weight down on it and it cracked and come off. Now I can fit the PAS. I'm gonna just watch a few tutorials and make sure I get it right. Don't want to be getting my crank arm off again. Right, it's Thursday the 27th and it's 7 a.m. in the morning. So I've not done anything for a few days. I've been busy. As you've seen in my last clip, I got the crank arm off. So I've got the PAS here. That's a sensor. That's what it looks like with this connector on the end, what you just plug in. So I'll just show it now. The sensor goes on there like that. If you can see, if it's in focus and it attaches to the frame where the bottom bracket goes in. So you need to first degrease that and then glue it on, I think, by the look of it, looking at tutorials. So that goes on there like that and that goes on like this. You have the sensor like that and when you pedal, obviously the disc moves and the magnets move, pick up on the sensor. So I'm going to fit that today. But first of all, like I said, I need to degrease it. So I've got some Grimex and it's a citrus degreaser concentrate. I got it off eBay the other year and I've still got loads of it left. It's really good, proper handy when you're cleaning bikes up and stuff like that. So I'm going to degrease it and I'll catch up when I've done it. Okay, hour later, I've glued it on. I use this glue, let me just grab it and focus. That's Stick It All Purpose Adhesive by Wilco. Load of rubbish. I had to basically sit here and keep it pressed on for 20 minutes before it even went tacky. And that's after leaving it to go tacky for 10 minutes. Stuck it on, waited 20 minutes um, before it stuck. So I glued around my sides here too. So anyway, that's on. And I've also got the disc and I've started chiseling out them fins that was on it. So it'll fit on, if you can see, this bit here. Not that square taper, that bit, the bottom bracket. So needs a bit grinding off, as you can see. The disc is a little bit bigger. And yeah, um gonna get my Dremel out and get it ground off. Right, so I didn't get the Dremel out. I got the drill and the Stanley knife and I got the drill inside and carefully ground off the fins and use this Stanley knife to just get the awkward bits off. And as you can see, that's seated on really well there. Um, a couple of millimetres gap, so that's brilliant, right? So now is to get the crank arm back on. As you can see, it moves freely, no noise. Just a quick bit of advice, make sure the arrows are pointing the right way. <laughs> so, as you can see, we're pointing the right direction, so it's not making a noise. So just as a precaution, I've put a bit of glue around my head. Uh, so I'm going to leave that to dry now for about an hour. And then I'll fit my crank arm. And my crank arm, you get it. You've still got the tool in there for taking it off. But you just put it on, put this bolt in and tighten it up hand tight um, with a bit of pressure. The guy said on the tutorial. So we'll see. But OK, let this dry. Look at this sweet little girl. She just stands at the gate and waits. She's so good. Hey, 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 hey. You good girl. No, she likes licking weird stuff off your hands. Like grease off bikes. <laughs> oh, you naughty girl. Leave the camera. <laughs> I'll say that to her and it makes her bark. Leave the camera. Leave the camera. Flow, flow. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> She's funny, aren't you? Hey? Aren't you funny? Hey? What are you doing? Hey? She's a good girl. She's a proper cuter. Right, okay, so the crank arm's fitted and the PAS is fitted. So that's just been a quick show how, how to fit the PAS on a Voilomart e-bike conversion kit, what you buy off eBay, and yeah, that's it. So the crank arm's on. Next is to fit the Dralia, the front Dralia, double clanger, whatever you call it. Now I'm going to take the wheel off and then I'm going to fit the cassette first because it's got no cassette on it. I'll just show you it now, what come with the kit. Right, okay, so this is a cassette. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speed. So let's get it out of this packet, have a look at it. Looks all right. So I need to take the wheel off and fit this next. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I've got the bike there and I've got the wheel there. The cable's still connected. Keep it easier. I only need it here like this. So it's a case of learning how to put a cassette on. And do you just screw it on? I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'll go and watch a couple of tutorials now. Right, okay, it just screws on until it goes tight and won't move. And then I think you get this tool from my X Tools box and it goes down like this if I can do it with one hand. I think that's how you do it. And you just give it a like that and it's tightened. Don't know whether that was the right technique, but yeah, that's it on. That's a quick job too. Okay, get the wheel back on. Right, so that's the back wheel fitted. As you can see. It's fitted with the cassette on. I did stick a bit of grease on off camera, but it's quite loud. Um, if that's right, yeah, it looks it. Um, right, next is to get the mech hanger, I think it's called, um, and put that on. And then the drillia, the front double clanger, and then I'm going to have to sort a chain out tomorrow. But I want to get this done tonight. Okay. Front double clanger fitted, front drillia. Rear drillia fitted. Don't have a rear mech, it's a direct bolt on, as you can see there. Next cables to fit, but first like, I'm cleaning my chain and I'll just show you now how I'm cleaning it. So this is an ultrasonic cleaner, cleaning jewelry. You can clean metals, all sorts. I've used it before to clean mini motor parts. Okay, so this is a citrus degreaser. I mentioned before that I'd got off eBay. It's Grimex Citrus Pro. It's a concentrate. As you can see, I've had it for about two years or more and only use that much. Right, it's had two baths with the citrus degreaser in and it's come up really clean. And this is the water off the second bath. So I thought I might as well pop the front trailer and see if the rear trailer will go in and see how well it brings that up. So I'll catch up when I've finished them all. Right, okay, so I've finished doing it. So first of all, that's a chain. It's going really well. The chain was thick with grease. The front double clanger. Quite impressed how it's brought the rear trailer up. Look at the cogs. Obviously that metal's tarnished. So that's a bath of water. Okay, so the double clanger's fitted, the drillier's fitted. I've just spent easily an hour and a half trying to join my chain 
no way can I do it. Been went and looked on YouTube at the Mountain Bike Network, I think they're called. Um, and yeah, you can get a power link, I think they call it, and it's like a quick split link. And I need one of them. Bit gutted really because I wanted to get the chain and that on tonight and just fit the cables tomorrow and it would have been done. So always be something that slows you down or stops you in your tracks. Okay, catch up with you tomorrow. Right, so it's Saturday the 30th of May 2020. It's 8am in the morning and I've had the controller out of here. I've fitted the PAS into the controller. It's simple, it's just one wire. You can't go wrong, all the connections are different. So, put the cable tie on for the PAS. Now, I've been looking at this chain, what I was struggling with last night, and it got me really frustrated. Um, and I'm not sure how to do it. So, there's no harm in asking for help. So, I've asked my mate, and I've known him from being a teenager and he's got a YouTube channel, he's a fellow YouTuber he's called Cycling With Russ, his YouTube channel I'll put a link at the end and yeah, he's coming to help me so we'll catch up when he arrives Right, so see what he comes up with because he's worked on bikes for years he's an avid cyclist as you know by his channel name and yeah um, I'll catch up when he arrives, okay? Let's do it again. <laughs> right, okay, so Russ is here from Cycling with Russ, and he's got his two sons with him, if you want to introduce yourselves. You are? Caden. And you are? Ethan. And you are? I'm Russ, from Cycling with Russ, <laughs> right. aka Rusky's Adventures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you can check his channel out. He does road rides, mountain biking, and various stuff about his life, and he goes riding with his two sons. So, okay, he's fixed the link, and I'd done it wrong when I took it apart. I'd not pushed one of... I'd, well, I'd actually... He pushed it. So what he'd done is... It push the pin all the way out. Whenever you do it, you want, you can see there, well, one of the mistakes, you want to push the pin out, but not all the way out. So then you can push the pin back in because these are, they're, they're completely flat and square them on the edge of there. When you buy a Shimano quick link, it comes extended with a tapered bit on it. And then it's easy to push into the hole. Then you send it home and then you just snap the back off but you don't need to do that. I think most racing teams, this is what they do because they say that this is a, a stronger link to hold it together, but it's all done now. Right, so I'm gonna try and fit the gear shifters after, but yeah, that's a chain on anyway, so I'm buzzing with that because it got me stressed last night. Right, so thanks to Russ and his two sons and I'll put a link to his channel at the end of a video. Okay, cheers. <laughs> Okay, so you see my friend cycling with Russ and his two sons, and yeah, don't forget to check them out. Loads of great cycling stuff. So I've got the chain on, as you can see there, it's on my bottom chain ring, and it's on my second one there, right? And I've had a look at it, and these gear shifters that I've got will not fit on with a throttle, so I'll have to rethink that. Also, Russ said get a new chain if I'm going to sell it because this one's knackered. So that's what I'll be doing and I'll be looking up gear shifters. So the thing is now I want to check my pedal assist works. So I'm going to catch up either later on if I get a chance or tomorrow morning and take it for a test spin with the pedal assist and see what it's like. So I'll put it on charge and I'll catch up on the next clip outside tomorrow.
Right, so the pedal assist isn't working, so I'll have to head back. So maybe, so maybe I should have checked it before I brought it out, but it definitely don't work. This is a throttle. Leave it, I've got a puncher. Lucky I'm not far away. So pedal assist don't work and got a puncher. Great. Let's turn it off and it's push it back. Well, it's back to the drawing board. 